So I'll admit that I do, to a degree, enjoy the horse race aspect of the Democratic Party primary process. But I do think this question of who is the worst Democrat running, it is something that we should consider because we only have a finite amount of resources and time and we have to make sure that we defeat the worst of the worst. So at the beginning of the primary process, I pretty much declared Joe Biden to be the worst because, I mean, there's a lot of reasons as to why he really is the worst. But as time has kind of gone on, I've realized that Pete Buttigieg is also really bad because not only is he being propped up by the media, but the things that he says about Medicare for all, they're actually landing. Like he, I think, single-handedly to an extent, is driving down support for Medicare for all because since he's been attacking Medicare for all, well, Medicare for all has gone down in the polls and a public option has increased in terms of public support for it. So these are people who we need to target if they are the worst, because we have to make sure that the primary is as left as it can possibly be. And there's a lot of centrists that I loathe in this race. But really, when it comes down to who's the worst, there's two options, Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg. And I've gone back and forth. Um, and ultimately, I think I've probably landed permanently on Joe Biden. But I outsourced this thinking to my Patreon patrons because I wanted to know what you guys thought about who's the worst, and I asked and you guys answered in large numbers. So, by a total of 48 votes, patrons of the Human Support believe that Joe Biden is the worst of all the 2020 Democrats, and in second, but a strong second, is Pete Buttigieg with 22 votes, Amy Klobuchar comes in third with 12 votes, and then John Delaney in fourth with seven votes, Kamala Harris in fifth with five votes. So you kind of see all of the centrists, you know, unsurprisingly, being targeted by the Humanist Reports audience as the worst of the 2020 race. Now, we have Cory Booker with one vote, Bernie Sanders with zero votes, unsurprisingly, Tulsi Gabbard with two votes, Andrew Yang with four votes, Beto O'Rourke, who has since dropped out with three votes, Elizabeth Warren with two votes, Julian Castro with zero votes, billionaire Tom Steyer with two votes, Marianne Williamson with one vote, and Michael Bennett with zero votes, not necessarily because he's not a goon, but I think because he's such a non-entity. Like, he said something the other day that proves how unserious he is. So he said, rather than looking at free college, what I'm really looking at is uh, free preschool. Now, obviously, we should do both. That's the obvious answer. Why can't we have both? But I mean, preschoolers can't vote. So if you want to win an election, well, political expediency dictates that you should go after people who will be casting votes. There's lots of college-age people who will be voting. To say that you don't care about them and you care more about preschoolers when preschoolers don't have debt, I mean, it's a little tone deaf, right? But nonetheless, uh, I agree with basically the top five here. This makes a lot of sense. But ultimately, it seems like people are relatively conflicted between Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg. But um, the comments kind of shed light on some of the patrons thinking here. So Mari Isabel says, Pete is pretty horrendous, but I'm going with Biden, who was a more obvious wrong choice for this country. I believe that either candidate would lose in a general election, but Biden, with his mental decline and backwards attitudes, couldn't be further from representation presenting who we are as a country. Marxist curveballer with a fantastic point here says, Mayor Pete, get ready America, because every four years the mainstream media will be trying to ram this guy down our throats as a serious candidate who represents democratic values and has broad appeal in Midwestern states. Seeing him explain the reasons why a public option would be financially disastrous, only to then come out a few months later with the exact opposite talking points on Medicare for all was disturbing to say the least. In all honesty, I think the South Bend Police Department scandal will be his unraveling. However, he'll still end up on MSNBC or CNN as an overpaid corporate shill spouting off nonsensical talking points about the munitiae or his emphasis on undefinable values. Side note, Buttigieg is the worst candidate of 2019 and munitiae is the worst word of 2019. Thanks for everything, Pete. Hunter Louise Jelf says Amy Klobuchar's smugness makes John Delaney blush. At least she has the momentum from Bill Maher's endorsement. 1.8%. Woo! <laughs>
<laughs> Kay Smith says Biden is the worst at the moment. He should retire from public life. Tom Steyer is also awful. He used dirty tricks to develop his email list, then bought his way into the race and onto the debate stage. His only idea is we must be Trump. We never need another billionaire president. Are you listening, Michael Bloomberg? Borden says Beto was my pick. The ratio of hype to substance is so wildly off. There's no table tall enough for him to stand on to reach the presidency. Christian LaSalle says it was a tough decision between Cloud Boot Char and Mayor Pete, but I went with Pete since he is probably the most effective in arguing against Medicare for All. His constant unchallenged lies about Medicare for All make him especially dangerous, and if by some insane twist of fate he actually wins the nomination, he would get destroyed by Trump in the general. Yeah, so these are all really fantastic points, and Christian LaSalle is actually the person who brought the Slate article to my attention that demonstrates how support for Medicare for All has declined while support for a public option has increased. And that's largely due to uh, the lying of Pete Buttigieg. So, you know, there's no question. Pete Buttigieg and Joe Biden, polling-wise, they're the biggest threats. It's still Joe Biden who sits at the top of the field. But they're still both very nefarious and they both must be defeated. So I think that, you know, I'm going to declare this for the most part. A draw? Um, no, I can't declare it a draw, actually, because Joe Biden got the most votes. So Joe Biden is the worst of the worst. But I still think that Pete Buttigieg is someone who we have to look out for. Because even though he's not doing too well polling, like I think he's sitting at 7% on average, the media is really trying to prop him up. Like they just ran a segment on CNN where they basically likened him to Obama. And he's basically the second coming of Obama is what I took away from that segment. It's just embarrassing. Like, this is a manufactured candidate who wouldn't have a leg to stand on if he wasn't being propped up entirely by the media, which is so frustrating because it demonstrates how powerful the media is. They can pick and choose uh, winners and losers. It's why, you know, I display this book because um, it's true. They manufacture consent. They are more, you know, subservient to power than... Um, state-run governments and authoritarian regimes but that is like i'm getting on a tangent joe biden's the worst that's the takeaway um yeah let me know your comments down below if you're not a participant in this poll who you believe is the worst and also i'd like some more poll ideas because i do want to continue with this trend um i think that it's it's fun and uh, i want to bring this back i think that more interactivity with the audience is not just fun but it's it's better it makes for a better podcast if i'm getting the input of people who watch it and support us the most. So I'll leave that there. Mike is the worst progressive on YouTube. Please don't subscribe to him or become a patron. David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay?